So it's May 5th. Happy Cinco de Mayo. A little garden update. Going into the fifth season. Pretty stoked about how the garden looks. Didn't freeze last year, this year. So the garden looks amazing. Everything is a little bigger than uh, anticipated. Maybe a third the size bigger or even more. And uh, you can see the larkspur. Eh, it's not the best larkspur patch I've had, but there's some larkspur there for sure. Um, I'm pretty sure the freeze had a lot to do with this little patch here. A few of them here. You can also see the Indian blankets are coming out here. Just starting. Mexican mint marigold. Uh, it's coming out. Again, this is only the second year for this plant here. So I'm really happy that it's uh, even that big, to be honest. Part of Barbados here, well, furry things. Or they look kind of furry. Uh, these things get big and they take over this whole bed here. This whole bed. And you can see the Mexican oregano there. These things are Mexican oregano. That's a blue bonnet that just hasn't gone away yet. The blue bonnet. Here we have Mexican bush sage right up here. Five of them. They get nice and big. Over here. Esperanza. So Esperanza. Only three of them came back. I got five of them over here. This guy didn't come back. Neither did this guy. So, I'm disappointed there. Doesn't always work. And, uh, go over here. We got a bunch of Texas sages. One, two, three, four, five. This one is different from these ones. These four are my favorite. Uh, El Dorado sage, Texas sage. And I uh, took cuttings of my favorite sage to get that. Mexican willow right here. It's kind of sticky right now, but it's, I mean, it looks like a stick. But it uh, gets the most beautiful uh, pink flowers. Uh, here we have a mountain sage, Salvia microphala. And it loves the canyons. So this area right here is right next to a big tree. There's a big tree over there. So this is kind of like a canyon in through here. I think it enjoys it. I love this little area here. You can kind of see how I trimmed up the trees. It's nice and open and it's good for seating. Tropical sage, salvia coccinia, just keeps on going. I mean, this stuff literally didn't stop throughout the whole year. More Mexican bush sage. Here's one that's kind of starting to bloom right here. Mexican bush sage. Those blooms are going to die off in the heat, though. I don't think it'll finish. And the nice red salvia gregii. That looks excellent. You can see the salvias all the way up to the yucca restrata. This is another Texas sage right here. It's a green cloud Texas sage. And uh, this, I'd have to say, is the only one I don't like. I don't like it because it's too green. Most of the Texas sages are silver, or a version of. This is flowery senna. This thing is supposed to be flowering from on till off once it gets hot. This is the third year this tree is here. Maybe even the fourth season it's here. I think it's the third season. And uh, it's starting to put on some blooms. It better, because I will remove this thing. Uh, the previous two years, it didn't really bloom that much. And if it doesn't bloom this year, I'm hacking this thing down. This is prime prime time real estate right here. I could put something nice and big showy there. And I got this thing. So it better work. Uh, under here, you can see the ant lions. See those little divots right there? Those are ant lions. I brought in sand over here because I love ant lions. Ooh, look. They're messing with some ants right now. There's some ants stuck in the ant lion hole there. See all those little ants? Perfect. That's exactly what I want. They're stuck in the hole. They can't get out. 
and the antlion will eventually eat those guys. See how they're all stuck there? Perfect. And that's, that's how they do it. I like them so much. I put some sand over here too, a little bit of sand. So we've got them creeping over here. And uh, let's see what else we got over here. Flame acanthus. This flame acanthus is the number one hummingbird plant for sun in Texas. When I sit on my front porch and I watch the hummingbirds come in, this is the first thing they go for. You just heard a hummingbird right there, actually. He's mad I'm in his garden. Coreopsis and Salvia gregii over there. Looking really good together. Then a little Mexican hat over here in the background over there. Right under the Yucca Restrata. Nice. Salvias are coming in nice. And this is Jerusalem Sage. One of my favorite flowers. Um, it just finished blooming. Got a bunch of great pictures. You can kind of see the bloom, kind of. Just a beautiful shape to it, unique. Doesn't come out like most flowers. There it is. Just beautiful. Um, <clears throat> This is a fragrant mist flower or white mist flower. It's also, I think, called bone set. Um, it smells really good. It's got a lot of room to grow. They'll each get four to five feet. So got a little bit of room here. And then, oops, I turned the camera, didn't I? Very nice, very nice. So you can see the path full of bush sage. Bush sage starts up here and just pep, 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 all the way up the path. So twice a year it should come out. But these are new, so they're not blooming yet this year. This is um, Mystic Spires Sage. And you can see the bees all over it. I like this sage because first off, it takes up a lot of room. I and mean, this is one plant and it's only, I mean, this plant's old, but it's only been growing. It's May, so two months now. And you can see all the blooms on it. You can see how big it is. This thing's gonna get three times bigger than this. Uh, wildlife loves it. When I come out here at night, this sage is alive with activity. Um, Plumbagos. This is kind of turning into a plumbago patch, which is what I wanted. I got a massive plumbago over here. There's one, but it's probably like 10 of them growing out over here. Another one over here, plumbago. You can see the little runners coming up. And then on the other side of this, I've got uh, standing cypress. This is a wildflower, very high maintenance wildflower. It takes three years for it to bloom. You can see it's kind of coming out in orange blooms right there. Hummingbirds love it. And obviously this guy, this, this flower has got to be almost four feet tall. The Yucca Restrata flower here. I mean, it's huge. Look at that. Thing is awesome. And you just kind of see everything together here. It's, this used to be all grass. It's grown in really well. Um, you now I've got live oaks here and this is a Pittosporum. Big pit of sporum. It's really big. Here, it's black and blue sage. Oh, good. We got one coming out. It's just just happened this morning because they were just barely coming out. See how they really are a deep, almost black, before they bloom, and then they turn into this beautiful purple, black, and blue. Just amazing flower. This here is a grave for a dog we used to have. He's planted right here underneath this water fountain. And I planted a um, tree just for him. This is a Mexican white oak tree and also called a Monterey oak. Um, it's several years old, but it's only been here for less than a year. So, And uh, here we have a dwarf palmetto. I'm going to get a couple more to kind of put around this way and maybe one right here, but I'm going to get a couple right here. I just like them when they're massed together. Uh, this dwarf palmetto is one of the few things I paid money for. They grow so slow. I paid like $50 for this thing, and gosh, it's growing so slow. Um, 
succulents. Paid nothing for these guys, just took cuttings. I like having these kind of succulent planters on the corner. It adds a little uh, dimension and a little texture to the bed. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> just screening the house, we have uh, red tip photinias. Um, those were here when I got here. They weren't that big, but they were here when I got here. This is an American Beauty Berry. It's getting big. This is the uh, second year it's here, and this one's getting large, so that's excellent. It's uh, very shady right here in this area. There's the sun right there on the right. You can see how much shade it gets throughout the day. I really wanted a garden in the shade, and these chili patines allow me to do that. So these are all chili patines. There's one, it's not doing that well, but it'll come back. It's got leaves on it. It'll come back too here. There's another one, another one, another one. And then two more back here. I did have a third one back there. I had a third one over here too, but both of those died. So got a few chili patines over here, more than enough I need. <clears throat> Just started another garden over here. This is uh, being attacked by the Janista bug. It looks like I'll have to come over here and do some work. That is a uh, mountain laurel, another mountain laurel, another mountain laurel. I'm going to plant three of them here. These uh, photinias look like they're getting thin. This one looks chlorotic, so I want to get something started before these guys have to be removed. Um, you know, this is a mixed bag of results here. Yopon hollies grow in thickets. But it is so dense here. I mean, the, the cover is so dense. They get hardly any sun. And they will grow in this environment, but really slow. This one here, four years old. Look how big that is. I mean, it's terrible. This one is following the same pattern that this one did. It was really big and bushy. It looked like this. And then I put it here. All the leaves fell off. I think they weren't used to that much shade. And then now it's kind of coming back a little bit. <clears throat> These guys here are Texas Betony, the red flowers. And this is one of the very first plants that hummingbird scouts look for whenever they come into the garden. This little Texas Betony here. That's why I have them here. See Texas Betony. This is Eve's necklace. I've got some berms here with Eve's necklace on it. This is the third year for this plant here. I mean, it's supposed to grow super slow, but this is ridiculous. Um, I bought the plant. It was this big, really. Not that much bigger. Maybe like two inches. So, um, you'll see how it goes. This is the last year for this plant. If it doesn't put on some size, then it's out of here. Uh, same thing with this one. If it doesn't put on any size, it's out of here. This is an Eve's necklace right here. Good form. Kind of looks like a Mount Laurel, but it's not. Then over here, obviously, you see the Larkspur. Looks really nice. This is a little bit more shade. Quite a bit more shade. You can see the shade imprint on the ground right now. Lantana in the background there. And um, those larkspur do just fine in that shade. So over here, this is our front door. Front door area right here. And uh, a little succulent garden. <clears throat> now, this is a tropical area. When everything freezes, this little area right here will stay green. Um, I think it's because the house... The north wind comes this way and the brick hits the house. And I just think it's a combination of this is a tropical area. So uh, these succulents do really well. And you can see the succulents I've thrown on the ground. They're just growing in the garden. Another one right there. Just growing in the garden. There's another one over there. I uh, When I have too many, I throw them out here. This is lamb's ear. Love lamb's ear. I love the texture on lamb's ear. I'm try to get out of the sun there. You can see the fuzz on it. This is how I get kids into the garden. And that's one of the reasons I planted it right here, so much of it, because it's right over there, right over here. Kids love this stuff. And if you want to get them interested in the garden, just break off a leaf and hand it to them, and they will want more. Um, the lamb's ear is very, very cool texture. This is Pride of Barbados, so one of my favorites. Pride of Barbados and Esperanza, you saw the combination out there. It is my favorite wildflower combination, wild shrub, whatever you want to call it, combination for supper. So I've got quite a few of them here, three and then three, uh, Mexican mint marigold all the way up this path right here. That one's not doing very good, but the rest of them are doing pretty good. Wow, this one's even blooming. Look at that, way out of season. Probably because we just had a cold snap. They'll get those little yellow blooms all over them. It'll look like a big ball of yellow in the fall. 
So I've got them all up this path and then I've got them over there. So yellow, also yellow here, bright yellow. And then this is plumbago. There's a lot of ground beneath these shrubs, the Pride Barbados and the Esperanzas, they tend to grow up. And so the spaces I wanted to fill in with uh, plumbago and they're doing pretty good right now. There's one Esperanza right there that just hasn't come back. I mean, it's trying, it's really trying. I sure hope it makes it. I think it will. This one's about to start blooming, you can see. Um, interesting. This is uh, oxblood lily right here. They, uh, they'll go away when the heat comes, but they'll come right back. They are awesome bloomers in the summer or uh, September. Um, oxblood lilies get this nice big red bloom on them, and it's uh, really beautiful. Um, so this is my milkweed garden. And uh, kind of disappointed with this, kind of being super really disappointed with this. I've planted a ton of seeds here. I've got this here. I've got this here. And it's just not materializing the way I want it to. Milkweed is very temperamental. This is a kind of milkweed that grows here, but not the preferred kind, which is probably why it's not really doing that well. This is a Slepius tuberosa right here. And then over here we have, uh, I forget, but it's antelope horns, a Slepius something antelope horns. This is Blackfoot Daisy. I planted some Blackfoot Daisy here and they died. That's Blackfoot Daisy and that's Blackfoot Daisy right there. Another one coming up. I planted three of them here and they all died, but now I got more coming up. So whatever. I'm going to let them go and I'm not going to give them any care because when I gave them care, they died. Um, four nerve Daisy over here. Looking pretty pathetic actually. That's kind of dead, kind of being really. And over here, more four nerve daisy, right here. These guys, hominoxus, I just love them. They bloom all year long. This is Greg's mist flower, also known as hummingbird crack. You can kind of see the misty flower there. It's an aster flower, hummingbirds and butterflies, or sorry, not hummingbirds, butterflies love aster. There's a uh, little parasitic wasp there. I can't remember what that wasp is called, but there's one right there. So the Greg's Mist Flower is looking pretty good. And this is Sweet Almond Verbena. I really like smells. Um, I like smells in the garden. I think it adds a different texture. And so this little guy here, little guy, he's gonna get eight, 10 feet tall. This little guy right here is a smelly plant, Sweet Almond Verbena. And once it starts blooming, I've got several of them over here and I've got some right here and they will I mean, put out some scent. It is awesome. That's why I put it right next to the path. This is a wavy, scaly cloak fern. Honestly, I had it here. I've never had one, and I had it here in a xeric environment to see how much water it needed. It does need more than, you know, the desert plants. So I'm going to put it uh, in the backyard next to my hydroponics, I think. Um, this guy was here when we got here. I believe it's called a Chinese fire. And um, gets quite a bit of sun here. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I like it or not. This is um, bamboo muley. Listen. Hear that squeak? That's hummingbird. Yeah, there's a couple of hummingbirds in the garden right now over there. Um, this is uh, bamboo muley. It is not a bamboo. It is a muley grass. And it looks fantastic here. This is a native Texas poinsettia. I can only grow them in this bed because deer eat them. And everything else in my yard is deer resistant, but deer will come and eat those. Here's another one over here, a little slightly larger one. Native Texas poinsettia there. Love, love, love. Those are so cool. Some people call them weedy, but I like them. You can see the breadth of the, the um, bamboo muley there. You can also see back here, I've got more native um, poinsettia. And uh, also the succulent garden. I mean, can't ignore this. This is a pretty robust succulent garden. I don't even know the names of all these guys. Um, but there's a lot. And uh, I sure do like this succulent garden. I've spent two years on it. Uh, repotting and putting stuff where I want it. And getting certain planters together. And uh, I think it finally looks how I want it to. So I'm pretty excited about that. Let's go back here and look at that plant a little closer.
beautiful. Why? I don't understand why people wouldn't like that. I love that plant. Um, okay, let's go to the front walkway. This is a, by the way, this is a Japanese boxwood. When I got here, it was probably that tall. And I'm keeping it trimmed this way and on the other side, and I'm just letting it go. So this is our walkway. You can see ferns, got a lot of ferns. I irrigate this. Look back here, you see that little black thing? That's my irrigation tube. So I irrigate this stuff. I don't irrigate very much, but I irrigate this stuff. Boston fern, button fern, river fern, I don't know fern, I don't know fern, and asparagus fern somewhere down there. There's, you can't really see it, but it's down there, I promise. And uh, then over here, we've got a seat, because this is where my kids catch the bus, and they sit in the seat before the bus gets here. The Boston fern and a foxtail fern there. Then over here, one of my favorites, this is a Nepenthes, and it's basically carnivorous. See that little thing right there? It's a pitcher. It eats bugs. Here's another one forming. The pitcher's going to open here in about a week or so. Come over here. See those pitchers? Yeah, those things will catch the bugs. They fall in there and they can't get out and they die. So the pitchers form really well against this wall here, but out here in the open, not so much. I think it gets too hot or something. Oh, let's take that guy off right there. Um, you can see I don't have a rainwater collection barrel or bucket or anything. I just have a trough. The only thing I need it for is these two plants here, honestly. I put the rainwater in these plants, and I missed it. You can see down there, these are the only plants that get any attention from me. All the others, the only attention they get is this video. Um, but I do love this plant. Um, it is really cut down on the amount of bugs out here, to be honest with you. So there's a view from my front porch. Love it. And we'll do one more bed or two more beds on this side. This is the front yard and we'll go to the side yard here. So this is yarrow. Um, I am not convinced that I planted in the right spot. One thing I am convinced of is I'm taking, you can see how they're stretching this way. I'm going to take that one and move it here. It's clearly not getting enough sun there. Um, and they are stretching, so... <clears throat> I'm going to move uh, move them a little bit. Um, that is the only crepe myrtle left close to the driveway. There used to be three over here. But I um, had to move two of them. These are smelly items. Sweet almond verbena. Love a sweet almond verbena right next to the car. So as people get out, they're greeted by scent. Love, love, love. Here's another sweet almond verbena. So as people are entering the yard... They should smell good stuff. Sweet almond verbena, sweet almond verbena, three of them there, and then another one over there. And they walk through the path, or they walk through this path. So you can kind of see the rocks are laying on top of the ground here. I got these rocks for free, but I have not put them in yet. So I got a bunch of rocks, and uh, I was able to, to build this hardscape. And I'm going to put the path in, just haven't done it yet. I have not built this hardscape yet, or this hardscape yet. Those are some of the last two. This is another Salvia microphalla, a mountain sage in a canyon type environment. And then uh, this is a mountain laurel that's kind of getting unruly. Definitely, uh, definitely gonna have to do something about this guy. He's just too big. Just kind of overlapping the street and everything. Another uh, two mountain sages here, Salvia microphalla. Love those guys. I just love the red and white of the blooms it's called hot lips and i just love it little blue bonnet here going out and that's the front yard may 5th 2020 year season number five